Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar on Reimagining PKI Deployment and Management by Google CAS and AppUS. Today we have with us Anush Saburi, Product Manager at Google, focusing on security, PKI, and certificates. We also have Anton Truakin, Head of Solution Strategy at Google, with a focus on security and PKI. And we also have joining us Murali Palmi Sami, CSO at AppUX, responsible for the overall product vision and deployment. So before we get started, a quick note, you know, as the webinar proceeds, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to enter them in the chat box there, and we will address them at the end of the session in our Q&A round. So let's get started. Uh, over to you, Anton. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. So I want to highlight a few items we're going to go through today, and uh, they're going to mix uh, some of the industry trends and some of the more product-specific items. So I want to start. Uh, I'm going to start with a few changes to the kind of to the domain, to the outside, to the world of IT uh, that kind of changed how we do certificates and PKI. Then we're going to highlight a few items about how we're going to build requirements for the next generation or maybe next year of uh, certificate services and PKI. And then you'll see a few demos of our products and how they work together. Now, I want to start maybe a little bit high level, but at the same time, it kind of shows, gives the context for why some of the approaches we've been, we've been using since, I don't know, the 1990s don't work anymore. So one thing I would say is that while many organizations migrate to the cloud by essentially copying their data center practices by doing a lift and shift, ultimately to gain advantages from cloud computing, you have to do things the cloud way. You have to follow agile practices, DevOps, and other new newer models, and of course, use modern technologies. So the point is that some of the assumptions that were true when certificate tools and PKI of the previous era was built just aren't true anymore in the cloud, whether you are thinking about any of the big three cloud providers or even some of the private cloud deployments. Things don't really work the way they used to. And uh, as you would see in a few minutes, uh, there are new requirements and new models that need to be run. Now, I would say the first two items I'm highlighting here apply to first new technologies and practices, but also applies to new infrastructure and a few things, a few assumptions, for example, about the importance of hardware and you know server instances, machine identity, kind of broke down. And for example, again, in the, in the data center world, you had the server ID and IP address and MAC address and all that. But Identifying a machine, identifying an instance or an endpoint is, is a lot more difficult today in the cloud era. Well, maybe take it, I'll take it back. It's not difficult, but it's different. For example, uh, infrastructure as code and, and other type of virtual and cloud servers just don't have the same way to identify them. But here's item number three. As we move more things to the public cloud and more of the communication is encrypted, the need to identify machines, the need to confirm, validate, kind of shifts away from the old ways to certificates and cryptography. So to me, this is kind of uh, creating a perfect storm for public adop adoption that's driving the new models for certificate life cycle, for certificate generation, and for a few other things. Now, there's one more item that kind of throws a curveball into that machinery. Now, increasing software as a service adoption means that a lot of the other controls, a lot of this, a lot of the server-focused stuff, even a lot of the cloud server-focused stuff, isn't there anymore because we're not using servers; we're using services, and it also leads us to the zero trust revolution. Again, I probably shouldn't use the term revolution casually, but to me, the changes in access models and the emergence, the finally emergence of zero trust in a broader world, not just at Google, has been changing how we access and whether we need certificates and for what. So to me, these four kind of four forces affect the world of cryptography, the world of certificates, the world of PKI, and they change a lot of previously set assumptions about how we're going to do things. So let's quickly go through a few details on this so it will become more clear. Now, uh, Google Partners from FUX put together this amazing uh, history of uh, kind of pre-PKI cryptography, and you would see that there was an evolution from how things were done in the 1990s, maybe the first origins, maybe even before that, and, and what some of the assumptions were. Uh, first is, obviously, obviously that world was the world of on-premise. There was nothing else. But as challenges emerged, organizations tried to kind of fix them by 
built in a lot of managed services, uh, managed in the, in the old way with like people running configuration settings, helping you kind of manage security services. So managed PKI emerged to settle, to solve some of the problems, but does this actually fix, does it actually adapt and address the forces I highlighted, the, the cloud, the no new computing models and other things? To me, the answer is frankly not completely or maybe no. Hence, uh, there is a need for cloud PKI. And when I say cloud PKI, in, in some, of the, or some of the minds of the audience, uh, what, what happens is they think, well, yeah, we need something for the cloud that works in the cloud, but then they have this lingering doubt, like, wait a second, can I really trust it? So to me, the interesting thing you'd learn today is that actually cloud PKI may end up being more secure and more trusted than the on-premise model. So to me, this is an interesting thought you guys should hold in your heads while you're thinking about it, because we're not just trying to adapt things to the cloud so they're more agile. We actually are trying to make them more secure at the same time. And let me assure you, this is possible. Now, this perhaps isn't uh, the most exciting slide ever, but what I want, why I wanted to highlight this is that I wanted to highlight specific requirements that are affecting how we choose, how we deploy, and how we do PKI in general. So this, some of them are sort of obvious, like you want to be easy to use because a lot of developers just don't have time and they don't, have, don't always have the team that supports them like in the past. So for example, if we are doing certificates for containers, and we do, it's very likely that the team running the system would be developers, not cryptography experts, not even security experts, frankly. So to me, this means their ease of use requirements are dramatically different compared to what they were in the 90s or in the 2000s. And you cannot really rely on the managed service support because you're not going to call somebody on the phone to, to ask for a certificate if you need a million of them. And how about a billion? Uh, frankly, the answer is no. Other criteria here are quite important. I mean, scalability feels like a, obvious, I guess, a no-brainer conceptually, right? If you're in the cloud, things are elastic, things grow, so you have scalability requirements. But hey, these are scalability requirements of a dramatic scale. You may be dealing with, you may have dealt with 100 or 1,000 certificates, and how about 10 million requests show up? So scalability needs are kind of n not just numbers. They're like pretty big numbers and big changes, which really break the operational models, and that to me, that to me is what matters here. Now, I did promise a few points about security, and to me, the fact that somebody in the cloud can be more secure is kind of obvious. You know, my former, um, you know, my former home, Gartner, where I used to be an analyst for eight years, kind of liked to use a line, clouds are secure, are you using them securely? There isn't even a Gartner paper with that title. So to me, the security of the cloud infrastructure can be achieved to a very high degree, and Google is, of course, living proof of that. But there's a lot about communicating the trust and security, and we do, I think, a pretty good job being transparent. So. Security, higher security requirements can, in fact, exist, and they co can coexist with scalability and ease of use, which to me is an interesting achievement. Now, much higher support for automation and different cost models are also quite important because you're probably doing, if you're trying to run it on, at higher scale, you probably are looking at the uh, much lower costs by a much different cost model because you're not going to be uh, doing the same as before if you're running a million certificates. Now, to me, automation is another one that's worth highlighting a little bit because, of course, we expect modern applications to be built with API support and we expect the APIs to actually work. Now, admittedly, I've encountered some attempts to retrofit 1990s applications to the cloud era, and in my experience, they're not exactly successful. So to me, this is an interesting point, and this is an interesting point that kind of favors cloud native systems over cloud retrofitted or kind of cloud cloud evolved. Uh, to me, cloud native is the way to go for some of this because you want security, scalability, ease of use, and a few other items I just highlighted. Now I'm going to hand off to, to, to my partner here, Anush, who would highlight Google's specific advantages of the certificate authority service we just revealed. Uh, thanks so much, Anton. Really great um, introduction. Um, so as Anton mentioned, and, and perhaps this helps to understand the motivation when we build this, what we saw is that the the pattern by which uh, CAs and PKIs are being used are changing in a way that existing infrastructure are not set to support.
for them. Uh, basically, with the increased amount of uh, scale that microservices, containers, and VM require certificate, the existing CS are not meant to support them. Uh, in addition to things like the API format and, and whether they, you know, integrate natively into uh, DevOps uh, tooling um, and, and build process. As such, we built uh, this service called uh, Google Certificate Authority Service, which basically its goal is to simplify and automate the management and deployment of private CAs. And we wanted to make sure that we do this with three pillars in mind, right? Simplicity, uh, giving control to customer, and making sure it's enterprise ready. And I'll talk about these detail, in, in these, these promises in details. Uh, first was simplicity, right? Uh, we have a demo towards the end where you can see you can see, uh, create a CA in, in minutes rather than months it used to take. And that's a fundamental change on how the formula look like, right? Um, what it used to take basically uh, was to think about, you know, getting and buying an HSM, licensing the software, finding a secure location, installing cameras, scripting audit policy, build signing ceremonies. All that can be replaced with six simple clicks as you'll see in a UI. And right there you have an HSM back CA. So that's a huge change in terms of, you know, how you can quickly set up a CA. And more importantly, these CAs are built with uh, modern uh, development APIs in mind. Um, it, it builds the RESTful APIs in front, which allows engineers to continue uh, using the modern uh, development language and, and natively integrate that with their CI-CD tooling. Uh, the other part of this, as I mentioned, is that all these uh, time-consuming and risky tasks of creating infrastructure is now moved to the cloud. This allows customers to focus on the core business and not spend time on things that really does not accrue value to their end goal. And by not having to worry about these um, uh, OPEX and CAPEX, uh, you can lower your TCO because um, you only pay for what you use. You don't pay for um, things that you don't need, right? Previously, you had to buy an HSM and license the software for it, even though you only needed like 10 certificates. With this, you don't have that uh, scale problem anymore. So that's simplicity. The second part of the product for us was uh, making sure it can be customized fully by customer's needs. Um, with that, we, for example, support um, different types of deployment models, right, uh, in terms of the CA hierarchy. If, uh, if you want to bring your existing root CA because you've already invested um, you know, time and money in your on-prem PTI, you can actually do that, meaning that you can have a root CA hosted on-prem and you can have an intermediate CA running in Google Cloud where you can then get the SLA and the performance then and the scalability that Anton mentioned from the Google Cloud CA and then you continue owning the root of trust on-prem uh, so you don't have to change your trust model anymore. Uh, you can also customize uh, how the CA uh, signs the certificates and what keys it uses. Um, you can bring an existing cloud KMS key and have CA uses, and these options are all available. Um, in addition to that, uh, CA is a highly regionalized service, so you can decide which region the CA runs on independent of the other CAs in the chain. And so you can build a global CA using that. Um, the CA exposes APIs, uh, G Cloud command lines, and Cloud Console, so you can keep using the things you're familiar with in the cloud for managing the service. And also, you can define uh, granular access controls and um, uh, VPC service control, so you can define basically a security perimeter around your, your service to limit who can access your service and can do what. And lastly, it's about being enterprise ready. Um, CA service uses Cloud HSM that are FIPS 140-2 level 3 validated. Um, CA service will be available in all regions that our Cloud HSM is, and uh, it will support various uh, compliance that um, our customers can, uh, highly regular customers can tend to need. Um, we integrate with Cloud Audit Logs that gives uh, logs and visibility of who did what. And uh, it scales with high QPS, which is number of certificate issued per second for each instance, to millions of certificates per month for each instance and backed by the SLA. And all it does basically making sure that um, you have an enterprise duty product with an SLA back in terms of performance, which you can configure in minutes and don't have to worry about um, you know, updating the software or making sure it's, it's running securely. Now, 
perhaps this is a good time to do a quick demo of, of how this service will look like and, um, and see how easy it is to set up a CA. Um, Rudy, if you don't mind sharing their video. Yes, I'm doing that right now. Yes, yeah. thank you. And as Murli is uh, working on setting up the video, um, this service would also highly integrate with other GCT services um, so that you can envision a case where um, uh, you can use this service with GKE, with Google Cloud, Kubernetes Engine, um, with uh, Anthos Service Mesh, the load balancers, and so on. All right, let's get to the demo. Uh, so this is the Cloud Console. Um, for Google Cloud, you can navigate to the security tab and go to Certificate Authority Service. Uh, click on the Create a CA. First decision is whether it's a root CA or a subordinate CA. As I mentioned, the root subordinate can chain up to a group that is not hosted on Google Cloud. Uh, so you can also do that. Let's pick root CA. There are two tiers of operation for the CA. Uh, one is optimized for higher throughput, and we call them DevOps with 25 QPS. And, um, but does not track certificates. So this is for like shorter lived certificates. And one is called Enterprise that has lower uh, QPS, but um, track certificates. And it's ideal for things like machine certificates or like laptop or phone certificates. And let's pick Enterprise and then Regions. As I mentioned, it will be available in all regions that the cloud is available by GA. Uh, here you can pick uh, a name uh, for the CA that would basically show up in the CA certificate and you also use the name and the common name as a way to identify the CA as a resource in the cloud. Next is to pick a algorithm for the key. These algorithms are using Cloud HSM. You can also bring an existing Cloud KMS key and have CA uh, service use that key. Next thing is to decide on where the key will be stored. The default we use GCS buckets and the two options. You can either have Google manage GCS buckets or bring your own bucket if you want to. And next thing is to add a label like any other cloud resource. And this is an easy way to find the CA uh, in the cloud uh, using the labels. And one last step is to review what you have selected. And if you're happy with the selection, simply click, uh, click on the Create. And just like that, you have an HSM-backed CA running the cloud done within less than a minute. You can navigate to request a certificate or see all the issues certificate under that CA. And as simple as that, you can set up a CA. Um, anyways, with that, I'm going to pass it to Murli to talk about uh, our intervention and what you can get out of this integration. Thanks so much. Sure. Thanks, Anush. Okay. So well, let's look at what uh, AppUX brings to the table. Right? Uh, now, with Google Cast, we have a, a high-scale uh, CA that you can scale up from uh, Few hundred to uh, millions of certificates, right? Now, what AppUX does is basically br brings that platform, which actually automates uh, the whole process, the lifecycle process of uh, certificate issuance and certificate management, um, you know, across the board, right? Uh, now, the the integration that we have would it would basically discover the certificate both from the CA if, if there was uh, any certificates issued from Google or the certificates that are, are already there and if you're looking to migrate from an existing PKI to uh, 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 Google Cloud or Cloud PKI. Uh, and uh, if you can define compliance, uh, certificate in key compliance requirements, and then that would go set up policies to make sure that it, is, it aligns or without, and then basically that's the only way you can create uh, certificates and keys. And it pr gives you an end-to-end -end, uh, automation capability across uh, IOTs and devices, endpoints, uh, cloud uh, systems, CI, CD pipelines, uh, Jenkins, and, and whatnot. Right? It also gives you a capability to manage the SSH key and then securely manage your keys, especially if you're looking at uh, a, a way of uh, key escrow, or if there are multiple systems that require uh, the, the server certificate and the key to be deployed, especially if there is a user experience monitoring or a DDoS uh, or even a, a, a next-gen firewall with a man-in-the-middle uh, type of scenario. So it would be basically securely deploy and securely uh, manage the key uh, in end-to-end, uh, end, right? 
And also, if you're looking for an integrated uh, as a service PKI, uh, where you have full automation end to end, right? You 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 have that uh, as part of the platform, right? And uh, the, the way we have uh, built this integration uh, is that you know AppUX itself is a cloud native uh, runs on uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, containerized uh, application, so it can auto scale. So you can start off just like uh, Google Cache, where you can start off with a few hundred certificates to a few million. The same uh, approach uh, aligns with uh, AppUX as well. Uh, so there are different ways that you can consume or, or uh, connect to AppUX, right? It is a simple service catalog where it's like a, a, a user uh, UI that you can log in and then uh, take actions or an API. Or there are auto enrollment capabilities. Uh, these are the standard uh, uh, SCEP, I mean ACME, uh, EST, uh, all these standard uh, um, uh, auto enrollment uh, offerings that are there. Right? Uh, it's by default uh, provided so that uh, depending on what what your use case is, right, uh, for for the end devices. And we also have, uh, in the auto enrollment is more for a pull capability, right? So wherein the end client has, understands the protocol and is able to initiate and then uh, uh, manage or, or do the full auto enrollment uh, side of things. The other option is where uh, there is a push option, where if there is an appliance, uh, let's say, right? The appliance, if it doesn't support uh, any of these auto enrollment uh, capabilities, like uh, you know maybe an F5 or a, a firewall or Palo Alto and whatnot, right? So we have capabilities where we understand those APIs. We have managed uh, connectors that basically uh, communicates to those through the API and then uh, deploys and automates the whole process uh, for you, uh, all the way from uh, certificate key generation to uh, I mean, so the key generation to CSR generation to submitting it to uh, Google CAS. Uh, and then uh, deploying it, and then also uh, renewing, revoking all the whole whole uh, life cycle uh, piece of it. Right. So uh, the the highlights of this integration, or the key uh, aspects uh, of it, is now you get a, a, a PGI which is pretty easy uh, to to set up, and then also you get the automation which sort of uh, simplifies uh, the capability. And then uh, you're able to move what you have, right? Uh, either, you, let's say you have an on-prem PKI today, which you're using it for, um, you know, it's, a, it's a desktops and uh, laptops which are unrolled. Uh, now, if you want to use uh, uh, Google Cache for the next generation uh, DevOps uh, IoT use cases, you can have two issuers, and AppUX is able to integrate to both of it and manage that uh, in a single window, right? gives you a, 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 an integrated tier so that later if you want to migrate your on-prem or over to the cloud or if you want to keep it as hybrid, you're able to do that. Right? And then extends uh, into uh, all the other enrollment endpoints uh, for uh, for your DevOps and uh, 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 IoT use cases with all the plugins uh, that we offer. Right? And we, uh, it's a, there's a small list of plugins, but then it's, a, it's not the uh, ultimate list. There is uh, hundreds of uh, vendor version integrations, and because of the way the platform is built, we are able to offer uh, the, those additional plugins uh, at a, a, a pretty quick uh, turnaround with the microservices architecture that we have. The other important aspect is this self-service catalog, where you can define. For example, if it's a DevOps team, you only give them a, a short-lived certificate request option. Uh, so you can basically slice and dice what access you want to give to different teams, and then you can uh, 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 back it with the uh, SSO and, and whatever SAML, whatever you use internally, uh, or even Active Directory uh, and all that. So it makes it uh, easier for them. They don't even have to understand what PKI is. Uh, they would just uh, t uh, rather uh, request saying, this is the uh, CN and this is the device I want the certificates to be, and everything uh, gets automated. Uh, from there end to end. Right. Let's take a quick uh, demo, uh, just a few minute demo. I just uh, walk through uh, how this is uh, done with the uh, AppUX. Switch over. Hope we're able to see the screen.
So the once you uh, you log in, right? You, you have a, a visa which walks you through, or you just uh, uh, go go get started. It'll actually walk you through uh, what needs to be done. Uh, so you just configure uh, the certificate authority in this particular case. You just give a name, uh, and then you pass on uh, the details uh, for it. And then this uh, JSON, you just download uh, the JSON from uh, Google Cast. Now uh, we are integrating it so that uh, uh, all the data we pull it uh, from uh, Google uh, itself. So in this, once you upload the JSON, so all the uh, CAs that are configured in there as part of the project uh, is pulled in and you're able to see all the uh, CAs there. These are all the CAs that has been created from our, in our test lab. And now uh, you go configure the, the single sign-on uh, for, for Google. So uh, it's a uh, SAML with Okta, and then you just, uh, once you uh, add the details, you can go check the connectivity uh, to make sure we're able to communicate uh, with Google CA. Then you just uh, configure the auto-enrollment capabilities, so that's get back me, uh, ESG, and whatnot. Uh, so just uh, defining the SCEP server, where we should be listening uh, for, for the uh, SCEP request in this particular case, and the challenge password for the SCEP communication. And here, the backend CA and the issuer that you would basically be using to issue certificates. Once you set this up, then it automatically uh, starts uh, issuing certificates. And then you also can set up a certificate synchronization and role synchronization. What this means is you can go uh, get all the certificates which are directly issued from Google CA uh, into the inventory. And then also you can synchronize uh, uh, the roles that are set up uh, so that uh, it aligns with uh, uh, the roles in AccuX. Once you add all these things and the synchronization is done, it basically pulls the certificate and then you're able to see that in the dashboard. So in the dashboard, it will tell you uh, the certificates from Google with the uh, uh, color coding stating when it is about to expire, right, 30, 60, 90 day, uh, et cetera, and all that. And then a month and uh, uh, month, month of expiry uh, and, and all this uh, good stuff. Uh, so there are a whole bunch of other reports which are automatically populated. Uh, now, here, if you go into the inventory list, it tells you the list of all the certificates that are issued with all the serial number, metadata, and whatnot. Now, if you want to create a new certificate, you just go to Enroll uh, Certificate option. Now, you can either use a policy and then pre-populate all this information, uh, or you can give option to the user to select it. Uh, and you can even uh, specify that it has to be star.apux.com uh, or whatever domain.com. Um, and then you can control which uh, hash function and uh, uh, the key size that you that they have to uh, use or upload CSR and uh, validate all those uh, information. Once this is done, right, it basically gives you this holistic view, which basically gives you the issuer, uh, the, uh, the, the source certificate issuer and the CX. So in this particular case, it basically went and created the certificate from Google CAS, and then uh, it is showing you this chain uh, all the way uh, from the issuer. Now you can basically select add connector, and then these are all uh, some sample connectors that we support. There are 100 plus vendor versions that we support. You can select any of them and then say, this is where I want the certificate to be deployed. Uh, and then you uh, you can define all the parameters as part of the policy. And once you do this, right, it, it shows you the certificate and the CA, and uh, it tells you the devices. And there could be hundreds of devices on the right-hand side, and then it basically automatically pushes uh, to the device, and then you have the option to roll back and whatnot. And then the renewal process, uh, it, it, you can either set up uh, to automatically renew it, uh, so that when 30 days before expiry, it can automatically do that or you can basically uh, uh, give a notification where uh, it, it goes and uh, uh, triggers an, a notification with uh, uh, whatever the ITSM uh, system is, uh, ServiceNow, Remedy, Jira, uh, and whatnot, uh, and then you just uh, trigger an approval and then it, it goes and uh, executes the whole thing. It gives you a pretty quick um, view uh, into how we have integrated and automated the, the whole process. I hope uh, that gave you a, a quick snippet. Uh, you know, we rushed through a lot of stuff, um, but uh, yeah, feel free um, to share any questions that you have. And also, you can um, sign up for our, uh, you know, AppUX plus Google experience, uh, where we would be able to. Uh, you know, work it through in more detail that all the integrations uh, that we have uh, across the board.
We will pause there for any questions uh, that you might have. Thanks, Muli. I think we have a couple of questions that came in. Um, the first question is, I use Jenkins for pipeline management, and it involves distributed bills as well. Can this software be used with it, and how? Yes, uh, I can take that. So, yes, uh, so we have a Jenkins plugin uh, as part of AppUX where you can uh, set it up as part of the pipeline uh, for your CI CD. Uh, whether you're looking to use it for um, the server certificates during the deployment process or if you're looking to uh, code sign the server as part of the CI CD, uh, so we have uh, capability to, to do both. Uh, and then you can basically uh, leverage that. Uh, to define uh, the flow that you might need uh, as part of the CCD pipeline. Great. Um, the next question is, can the certificate management applications be consumed as a service package with the Google CA? Yes, uh, again, I can answer that also. Since it's, uh, you know, related to both. So yes, uh, it, it, it can be consumed. Uh, so the way uh, the way we have integrated uh, is that you can set up uh, Google CA from AppUX uh, as well with an integrated uh, uh, capability. So you can uh, pick up um, AppUX from the marketplace, um, and uh, you can uh, connect to a Google CA project and then uh, use that, or you can use that uh, as a service uh, capability also. Okay, thanks, Muli. Uh, another question that came up is. Can you say something about the Google CA pricing? I know Shanton, if you uh, want to take that. Yeah, I can. I can answer that question. Our pricing is not uh, public yet. Uh, we plan to announce them uh, at our GA time, which is sometime uh, early next year. Great, thanks, Shanton. Oh, sorry, thanks, Anush. Um, the next one is: Do you offer PKI infra management services? Well, um, if I, if I understand the question correctly, they're they're looking at uh, managing their. I mean, uh, with the uh, cloud PKI, the infra is already managed. Uh, I assume they're asking about an on-prem or a uh, or another PKI. Uh, so the way we offer that is, as I mentioned earlier, there's a hybrid capability, which basically enables you to integrate with uh, your. Uh, uh, on-prem PKI and manage that on-prem PKI or the main that and also the cloud PKI. Uh, and even if you're looking to uh, switch over, uh, so you have the capability to, to migrate uh, users uh, from, uh, from on-prem uh, to cloud and, and uh, uh, manage that in a hybrid mode uh, as well. So we have both those capabilities. Thanks, Murli. Um, there's another question that just came up. Uh, what is the HSM being used in this setup, and is it FIPS compliant? Yes, the HSM being used is uh, FIPS compliant. That's correct. Okay. Um, another question is, what verification protocols are being supported? I am not sure what the question meant. Uh, verification protocols for what exactly? Perhaps Maybe I think they're. Then they might be talking about CRL or CSP. Yeah. Oh, um, so yes, as you saw in the demo, we support like CA service supports creating uh, queues uh, that are stored um, on uh, GTS buckets. And we also provide um, uh, in our documentation page open source, um, sorry, the uh, sample code hosted on GitHub to run your own OCSP in front of our service. Yeah, and, and as part of okay, our QX, um, we also have um, uh, redistribution uh, capabilities uh, for that. Thanks, Murli. There's another question that just came up. Is the AppUX product running as a SaaS service? If I have on-prem CAs, what would be required for the on-prem integration? Um, yes, there, there is a SaaS service. Now, if you, if you have an on-prem uh, uh, 
CA, and then you are looking to manage that uh, with the uh, FUXS. There is a mid server that you uh, you you can set up. Uh, it's, a, it's a light footprint that you run uh, on prem, which basically communicates uh, to your internal systems, uh, and then um, uh, it handles that whole process uh, of uh, managing both your on prem and uh, cloud. Great, thanks, Murli. I think um, you know that's the end of the you know Q and A's that we uh, received. You know, thank you, Anu, Shanton, and Murli. You know, for walking us through this. It definitely was very uh, helpful and insightful. And thank you all for joining. Uh, you know, I think we sent some links over the chat, so uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you want to know more about the Google Cast and AppUX integration. Um, thank you, everyone, and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks very well. Thanks so much.